Hi my YouTube family, this is Melody from Home Garden and Fashion. I hope all of you are doing awesome. Today I'm going to talk about Bindi. Bindi is a very important aspect of Indian culture now. This has become a fashion statement now with all different kinds of fancy velvet and plastic bindis or whatnot all kinds of metals glitter stone everything but actual bindi used to be uh, made out of uh, um, colors and a lot of uh, herbs and spices and this to call kumkum and uh, for a little girl to young age ladies everyone wore them and then as the woman got married then she wore sindur sindur is more red and it has also many ingredients many things and it's believed that when a woman wears a sindur or a bindi every single day she's pressing on her sixth chakra which is called asna chakra now this bindu and this bindi or the man wears a tilak tilak is uh, they pull a long line over the middle uh, point between the two eyebrows now this tilak is different for different people in different path like someone going to get married they have a tilak for male is a red color um, and then the priest wear white colors from made out of sandalwood and then some priest wear yellow made out of turmeric so there are different different colors now um, many people today wearing bindis just for fashion but it wasn't for fashion statement little babies they put um, black kajal which is sort of like an eyeliner but this uh, organic eyeliner they made called kajal so that uh, they put it in baby's forehead that and that was to keep all kinds of evil eyes and evil spirits away and another reason for putting that on between um, the two eyebrows on the forehead is that's where not only we have asana chakra but that's where our points for sinuses so by daily putting pressure is putting the bindis they have cleared up the sinuses so they wouldn't get so much sickness from the sinuses and um, so women wear bindis all throughout the life and a bindi especially married women must wear bindi and nowadays women stop wearing everything because they just copy other cultures but they do not bother to look that what benefit it gave why we wore it or they did not bother to go research that why women wore it in thousand years ago so <clears throat> i had a lot of benefits so now uh, why married women must wear it because they try to protect the married woman so she was not attacked by any evils or evil spirits and a lot of time um, suddenly if their third eye gets open up the Ajna Chakra so then they will not be able to stay in the marriage or stay in the family or have kids or look after their kids because once their third eye, the Asana Chakra, opens up, then they will see the reality of this universe. And they will see a lot of things um, that they are not supposed to see. They will see the universe. 99% um, of things are lies. And these are just made up things. So once they see the truth, just like if you go research and you see Siddhartha, 
Gautam Buddha. Buddha, when he have found out that everything in the universe was lie, so he had to seek the truth and that is called opening up his third eye when he actualized that everything is lie and we're living a lie so he had to seek the truth so that's why they want to protect the woman by putting bindi so suddenly their third eye does not open because in a society where everything is based on lie and we're living a lie then all of a sudden somebody's third eye open up and they will speak the truth and they will try to show people that look everything is a lie you better wake up before it's too late but since everybody else is living the lie they will say that woman is crazy because what she's saying does not go with the rest of the world so she will be called crazy but actually the woman is not crazy her third eye just opened up and she can see hear sense feel a lot of things a lot of things which other people will not be able to do it so the bindi protects the third eye from all of a sudden opening up so so that's the bindi and so we do it from childhood to throughout our life and especially married women must 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 wear a bindi because they their third eye opens up and they start seeing things and they will not be able to function properly in the family taking care of their kids husband and everybody else and also when the third eye opens up, possibility opens up every way, but they just don't see everything happening only in this dimension. They see everything happening in all the dimensions because everything is connected and everything is united. And we don't see all that because our third eye is blocked, but once it is open, then we can see all that thing and it's going to be a chaos because once uh, the person started telling everybody what they're seeing most people will say oh that person is crazy so that's another the bindi is worn between the eyebrow where the pineal gland is and our ajna chakra is and this is a very important nerve center so by pressing in this nerve we are actually really waking up many of our nerves and this uh, kind of keeps our energy inside our body and uh, we uh, been these where people wear a lot of different kinds of red yellow yellow made of turmeric red made out of Sindhu and then with the sandalwood and with uh, saffron and different flowers all they have their all different different benefits and from a spiritual point uh, uh, people been wearing kumkum and sindhu and in Bengali they call tip and tikli you know different different names and but the main reason is to put pressure on the sinuses over there in our ajna chakra and keep the th third eye closed so um, people but then it also connects makes people spiritual and connects with with the higher divine but um, even though it connects it and makes them spiritual but it does not let them go to too far and see a lot of unseen things um, still even wearing bindi a lot of women has that ability to see that but not all of them so um, around like, uh, thousand thousands of years ago the Rishi Muni Yogi, the priest uh, in Hindu culture, they started putting the um, tilak doing in their head, and their 
mm, third eye was already open and they could already see all the things around them and around the world but only thing was they wouldn't come back to the society to talk about that with everybody so nobody actually thought they were crazy because they wouldn't discuss what they saw some of them would go to the cemetery and sit there and meditate for hours uh, and some of them were, had the ability to control the evils control the evil spirits and keep them quiet not to bother um, them or do any harm so um, this by putting pressure at the ajna chakra or focusing on it daily and living a total vegetarian life uh, living vegetarian eating vegetarian um, and just living a very pure life not lying not cheating once a person start doing that and then there is no stopping their third eye will open up and they will be able to see a lot of things hear things feel things and which at first is going to be very scary for them also because this is something new so that's why we see people in the family in the society uh, who are family people they eat non-veg drink alcohol and lie cheat all that thing so in that case their third eye will not never be open because they are not pure and so bindi is one of the thing they do so that third eye does not get opened up all of a sudden and people are not prepared the people who want their third eye to be open up they are prepared for it it takes a lot of preparation so bindi uh, is derived from the sanskrit word bindu bindu means a point so bindi is also a dot a point which is like the universe uh, universal cosmic energy the mm, the oneness of the universe so this is actually the mystic third eye the mm, and and we are just putting the bindi on the third eye so mm, also this bindi makes people uh, it kind of brings out the true true interest in true person the true uh, their um, intelligence their thought their uh, habits and all that thing the how they are the true being it brings them up so j suppose a woman wearing a bindi married woman wearing a sindur bindi now it brings up who she is she's a married woman she's wearing a sindur bindi now a little child wearing kumkum bindi so that brings up the little child little child wearing a kumkum bindi so it's so all different different ages so years back um the priest who was called brahmins they used to do uh, prayer ceremonies into people's houses or in the temple and they were um, the tilak which is the long bindi for men and these were made out of sandalwood they used to um, take sandalwood and rub it and then there was a, a little liquid they would make, make with water and put that as bindi and now they use that sandal or liquid paste they will make they put that on their forehead as tilak and then they put it on their neck too now where they put it on their neck is where our thyroid glands because the sandal wood they make a paste sandal wood is very cold so when they put it on thyroid gland thyroid gland requires a cooling thing 
Mm, so when that cooling agent gets to that, that keeps the thyroid very well. So then we have another cast called Khatriya. Khatriya where uh, red tilak and business were the businessman and businessmen were yellow and yellows uh, uh, represent for prosperity and then we have a shudra shudra as the working class and they were a black bindi so it shows that they are working class and then the women they were sindur and red bindi and then the male uh, priest also a uh, priest were always sandalwood but some priests did wear from sindur from sindur from the temple uh, so wearing bindi daily um, fixes sinus problems and it also improves the vision and eye health because uh, the center point in the forehead is connected to the nerves around the eyes um, so it connected with the supra tocolar nerves and these nerves a bunch of uh, frontal nerves and so these nerves um, are responsible for our eye health so these are all connected around the eyes all the muscles so it stimulates the muscles and the nerves around the eye by putting pressure daily to the rajna chakra and it also um, improves our vision eye health and also changes the shapes of our eyes it clears of sinuses pressing this point stimulates trigeminal nerve that is responsible for uh, sensation in the entire face so when this nerve is pressed or stimulated it increases blood flow to uh, the forehead region nasal passages and in the mucosal lining of the sinuses and the nose therefore it helps to clear up our nose um, clear up the block nose and relieve any kind of cold or nasal congestion or swelling or sinus pressure and it also very helpful in people with bell's palsy so years back in our ayurveda there was natural uh, remedy tried for bell's palsy people had uh, one side of the face become paralyzed so they the yoga yogi will put pressure in the middle in the ajna chakra so this muscles are connected to their forehead with their temporal nerves and then the cranial muscle is the one responsible for the facial muscle movement so they all kind of with the pressure they all got a, a nice boost and um, uh, a nice uh, energy so this treatment was by ayurveda uh, for the people with bell's palsy or sinus problem and there were treatment where they will heat up oil and put it on the bindi point for a uh, one hour just keep pouring oil it's called shirodhara and that was a treatment for insomnia headache and bell's palsy and sinus issue and also boost memory and concentration so it was good for alzheimer too so according to yoga and acupressor and ayurveda stimulating this middle point where we put in daily bindi this action actually increases our memory concentration and if we put from sandalwood paste bindi then it keeps that 
cool and and the nerves around the face could conserve the energy and we feel much better uh, so so we should just follow what thousands of years ago Jogi Muni Rishi did and what's in our scripture and learn what benefit this gave and just do these simple things to keep ourselves healthy and Bindi has no age anybody can wear it so best thing to do to make Bindis with natural things and use it daily instead of any plastic or glue or whatever other things so we women make Bindi out of Sindur and women in India also wear a Sindur and do a video separate on that and this wearing Sindur also keeps a woman from um, not going crazy so it keeps the uh, ozone layers in right condition I did not know this though once I went to a prayer ceremony and that was a priest came and this was in US so the priest uh, was like 106 years old I think I believe he's still alive and so he was uh, speaking to a lady who was a married lady and she did not wear any jewelry any bangles earrings necklace did not even wear a bindi or sindur on her forehead mm, so the priest nicely explained to her by wearing all these things that she could be way healthier and she was very unhealthy but at that moment i did not really i did not really believe the priest hundred uh, percent because I also like to do my research and see things if somebody just say something to me I wouldn't believe it I have to see, do my research and actually feel it and see it so then after some time that lady was extremely sick and she had a stroke and she was very young she was um, I believe she was just 50 and so then I started thinking that oh these things were so true because she never liked to wear any jewelry or anything so yeah we should research that we all should research that and learn it because there are a lot of things thousands of years ago were there and they were to benefit us so why not take advantage of those things most of them are free and they could do so much good for our body and for us so this was the video on bindi now i'm going to do a next video on mehendi how the women put mehendi for their wedding or mehendi has a lot of benefits so i realize that that really needs some attention and needs to be talked about so thank you so much don't forget to like subscribe comment and share and i'll see you with many many more bye bye